Now I know what you're thinking. Let's get into the fun stuff, right? Hold on one second. This is still fun, but I want to make sure that we understand the cause and effect of pen testing before we actually get into the actual fun, fun stuff. Because pen testing gives us a, a real-time security assessment of what's actually going on within our organization and the individual systems, whether they be like this or on the network. And that's because we are doing a couple of things simultaneously, and that is identifying vulnerabilities to, uh, to basically test potential weaknesses inside the actual individual endpoints within the organization. We're simulating real world attacks based on the threat intelligence and threat gathering that we did earlier. Let's say we want to keep using Snake as our example. We want to attack different systems on our network using something very similar to Snake to see if those systems withstand it. We're evaluating endpoint security measures and by doing so, it's telling us basically if what we're implementing is good enough to be able to stop some of the pen testing that we're doing. We're strengthening network defenses because the more that we attack on our own against the stuff that we implement, the more that we learn about our own network. I'm getting to the hats in just a second, don't worry. Uh, we also test our mitigation and response. And now this is where I get into the different hats. In the past, in different courses, you may have heard me refer to black hat, gray hat, white hat. And basically, those different assignments are the pen testers that have different sorts of information. White hat hackers have everything, including username and passwords, to be able to penetration test a system or network. Black hat hackers don't have any information whatsoever and aren't even given a guideline on what their limitations are as far as the scope of their attack. Whereas Grey Hat, which is more common than anything else in the world nowadays, is given a little bit of information. They may be given like, here's an IP scope of, or IP range of what you're allowed to attack and don't attack this specific IP address. So you're given a little bit of information, but not everything. Well then based on that, we have red teams and blue teams. And blue teams that do pen testing, like I've done for a little bit, basically go around and do everything that we just talked about to stress test the environment that we're in. But we're organic to the organization, so there's kind of a home field advantage to that, right? Well, that's where red teams come in. And that can be somebody within the organization that is designated only as a red team pen tester that knows very little about what we're doing on the security side, or it can be a third party organization that's contracted out. And when the red team comes in, they're really testing everything that we're implementing because humans have the, uh, what's the best way to put this? Let's say we catch ourselves at a fault when we're pen testing ourselves and we have the tendency sometimes to just fix it on the spot instead of properly report it. I'm not saying it's malicious. I'm just saying that sometimes it happens. Whereas a red team is gonna report everything that they find and we use those results to constantly improve our security posture. Don't take red team results personally. I'm just putting that out there. Now, uh, we also want to incorporate a continuous improvement learning model all the way through this. And I'll get more into that in a second, but I just wanted to go over the basic components of why we pen test and how it plays a big pivotal part into the actual security of our network. I have up on the screen right now, the four basic steps of pen testing. Now I'm only looking at this from a administrative point of view and not necessarily the technical stuff because you've seen in the past what we've done previous courses like the hacking methods, tools and techniques where there's really a lot that goes into uh, scouting out a potential target and trying to get it to pop for us. Specifically on the side of organizational management and tightening up security for our organization, these four steps guide us in doing our pen testing. First and foremost, we have planning because planning is critical in every step of what we're doing. We don't just go in guns blazing trying to pop any system that we can get a hold of. There has to be a purpose behind what we're doing. Now, this may be different if, let's say, like a hacktivist is trying to come in and do a vulnerability audit for potential damage later on. The chaos is their world. But for us, we try to steer away from uh, uncontrolled chaos and more on the sides of uh, so, uh, the known chaos that we know that this vulnerability that we discovered in CVE so-and-so is what we're actually going after to see if it's been properly patched. And if not, then we get to play with it. And that goes into the discovery process. In our, after we plan out what we're actually attacking and how we're going to attack it, the discovery process could be as simple as running an in map against an organization's IP range or doing a Nessa scan against the individual systems 
at a low level uh, slow scan so that way the IDSs or IPSs don't pick up on it. And based on those reports that we get back, we can figure out if our planning matches up to the discovery and if we want to engage or if we go back to the actual planning again. Now through discovery, once we figure out what's actually open and vulnerable and we want to leverage it, we go into attack mode. And you'll notice that I have a blue circle around discovery and attack. And the reason for this is, is because sometimes while we're doing doing or implementing an attack against a specific vulnerability or system, we may discover another vulnerability. And that's where continual discovery always is uh, taking place. And so that's why I had those two specifically circled. Now you may notice on the bottom that I have reporting as far as like encompassing everything. And that's because regardless of what step that we're in, we're always taking notes and logging everything. Whether we work for the organization we're pen testing or we're a third party contractor, the actual reporting and logging of everything that we run across as far as pen testing is concerned is critical information that the organization must keep track of in order to be compliant to their SOPs or regulatory guidance like federal statutes. Now for the purposes of an examination like CYSA+, these four areas are just generalized. So let's take an example real quick and work together and kind of figure out where we're at in our process. If we're using Metasploit inside of Cali to implement a vulnerability uh, test against CVE 2023-1234, we are in the attack phase. And that's pretty simple because we're actually implementing an attack. But how did we get it? Well, we ran a Nessus scan against the organization and discovered that uh, IAVA compliance number two indicated that CVE 12345 was open. That's discovery. And the reason that we're working on the system and trying to do a pen test on it is because when we planned everything out, this fell within the scope of what we actually needed to test against. And the entire time we're reporting everything going on. We're reporting the individual system that we're attacking. We're reporting the vulnerability that was found through the actual scanning and through the network discovery, and then the results of the actual pen test itself to see if that vulnerability was something that we could pop and manipulate or something that was actually patched and it was a false positive on the pen testing side of the house. And all these reports go up to whoever contracted us if we're outside the organization or to the C-suite upstairs. So that way later on, we as the cybersecurity analysts can actually review everything and figure out how we put out a better implementation of the security policy for our technicians. Addendum. I forgot to mention something and that is NIST Special Publication 800-115. I'm not gonna take too long on this. It's just, I'm giving it to you as a resource to be able to review later on. I'm gonna put the link for this below because this is the NIST special publication that kind of goes over technical, uh, the official title is Technical Guide to Information Security and Testing and Assessment. That is, this is the guideline for pen testing, especially in that three letter agency or federal government environment in the US. And a lot of organizations kind of fall back on this special publication right here to be the guidance uh, for pen testing overall. It's been effective since uh, 2020 and was last updated in April 2021, just as an FYI.